Thank you very much. I especially appreciate the engineering department, Dean, for organizing this, and Lori, really putting together all this together. She asked me, hey, what you want? We want to do something during the engineer's week. And can you help us? So I thought, OK, sure, I can come and talk about it. And that's this subject I taught, maximizing value from your asset. This is kind of a, asset management is a big subject. It's very wide. We talked to some few people earlier. And this is going to be a primer, pretty high level, 30,000 feet, what asset management is. Because a lot of people don't understand. They're confused what asset management is. And I'm going to talk about some of those things, OK? I got a quiz for you guys. Most of you are work for the industry. So what are the top two safety side evaluation? Come on, guys. Arc flash. Arc flash. No. Slips, not there yet. Shoring, cuts. Cuts, bruises. Top two. They are there in the list. Ten, but not. Yeah. Grounding. Proper grounding. Proper grounding. No. Okay. Fall protection and hazard communication. Those are top two. In fact, these are top ten. The top four, fall protection, hazard communication, scaffolding, respiratory protection has been four top, last two, same thing last two years. With all those, you know, same. You don't do that, do you? Okay, I just put together this outline, what I'm going to talk is a kind of a introduction, setting the stage. Some of the things are going to be really basic because my understanding, looking at the list, some are students and some are just starting this business. So I just want to give them some why we are doing this, why assets are there. Some, I'm going to ask some asset related questions to start thinking, you guys to start thinking about what asset mean, asset performance factors, asset management process, and some challenges. And then we'll talk about, you can ask me a question on the way, or I'll have later on, I can talk at the end of the talk. Again, as I said, it's going to be just a 45 minutes of talk. This is a big subject. In fact, Laurie and the Hort have we have been talking. They want to do a two days class on this asset management. I think sometime in April. April, that's what is coming out. You guys will be getting some information on that. Okay. A little bit about me. I've been around many, many years, spent many, many nights on the floor. Currently, I'm at ADC, almost 31 years there. Before, I've been to Carrier, True Temper, Bethlehem Steel, quite a bit involved with the industry. I was involved as a US rep on uh, ISO 55000, which is a new standard, ISO uh, asset management standard. In my spare time, <coughs> wrote a few books. This is a place I work. And this is a unique place, $12 billion asset. We have everything is a small city, not small city like Murfreesboro. We have we road, commode, housing, you name it, we maintain it. Anything flies up in the air. We have tested it our place, whether it's a rocket or our engine part or space shuttle part or whatever, we have tested it. We create those conditions. Really, somebody asked me what's our product. Our product is data and air, conditioned air. That's what we do. But we got twelve billion dollar asset to do that. This is about my company, Jacobs. They are, I get, go to many places, NASA and a few other places as a part of my company corporate and help them. My objective today is to 
increase your understanding of asset performance factors, asset management process, asset management related standards, some knowledge about that, and in how to create a reliability operational excellence culture, which really requires not just maintenance guys, everybody in the plant. That's the message I want to give. It's not a maintenance anymore. It's everyone in the plant. Like your safety, a quality program, is everyone has to get participate in more in maintaining that oil assets. And hopefully, you will get a few nuggets. You can take it back and apply it. Setting the stage. Fundamentally, why companies, organizations exist? They have a mission, vision, stakeholders, stockholders. They make a product, what our product is. We sell it, make money, money comes back, and they complete this vision and mission, basically. Now, why people are buying this? Why they have to buy? Company have to delight their customers. Now, customer, let's think about not just a product buying consumer. Think your next whom you supplying, whatever you are doing it. Your next person, you are handing over your semi-finish or whatever product. That's your customer. You want to delight your customers. Means providing that, delivering that service at affordable, reasonable cost. And that will make customer happy. They go back and buy. And that makes this happy. So that's the cycle it goes. Now, how we do this? We need our assets. We need people. These are two. Again, I left material. Yes, material is important. But for sake of our talk today, I'm talking about asset and people. Both have to work together in our process, make that product or deliver that service. All these GIT, just in time, lean, all these kind of things are not going to work if your assets are not working. If they are not properly maintained or they are costing too much to maintain, they are not reliable, they are failing, you are not going to produce. Do you know what the current health of your systems are, assets? How old are they? Can they support corporate objectives? Do you know what's corporate objectives? What next year they're going to make? How many they're going to make? Is our assets going to make those commitments going to do it? Are they in such a good health? Keep those thoughts in mind. Some of the issues we have, current environment. Most of the, let's talk about capital projects. All our new projects or modification, improvements, all those. There's a big value leakage from CapEx to OPEX. Time somebody say, hey, okay, this is a capital project, you know, we want to and hand over to operation. What's happening? They exceed budgets, overruns, schedule delays, reduce capabilities. This is a big issue with the big companies or even small companies. What happens is you Value leakage is a new term being used when you don't get what you want. You set certain requirements, that's what you want, but you don't get it. It get delayed, cost too much, and your ROI goes to part, return. And there's a lot of studies done on this. This is a one study, all these projects, 2001, 2011, Look at that, 10%, 20%, 30% overruns. In fact, this list is a big project, billions of dollars. Euro tunnel, you know, this is your Bitworks line, cargo rail line, Kuala Lumpur airport, all these billions of dollars overruns, late. And this is the same story in the small projects also. In fact, when I talk to my friends, as well as my own experience, talking to many, many people, my own companies and many other companies, some of the reason, 
We don't know what we want when we put our requirements. Scope creep. As we're just working on it, we find out what we really we want and then keep adding those things. Requirements are not clear. Technical challenges. Yes, they will happen, but it happens a lot of time. We cannot compromise what we want. Unrealistic schedule expectations. Lack of not sufficient commissioning plans. We don't do a good job in commissioning, taking over our new assets. Workforce skill shortage training. We are facing this area. When knows it? How much shortage we have? I mean, some of companies here, I know Nissan and other companies, are, we are trying to go to vocational school, high school. So the people talk to them and get them on engineering on this uh, uh, white, uh, blue color, uh, blue color area. Look at high schools. How many high schools have shops anymore? Not. Used to have a welding shops, auto shops, carpentry shops. Don't have any more. They are replaced with a computer shops. There's a people of welders can make fifty, eighty thousand, hundred thousand dollars a year, but people don't know about it. Lack of understanding asset life cycle. <coughs> and we're gonna talk about that. Hey, what we know, lowest let's get a lowest cost. Build this for lowest cost. Don't worry about what happens in O and M phase. And in fact, oh, that you will do training, documentation. This hierarchy of the asset, oh, you can do that later on the o and phase. Let's not worry about that. Let's, we cannot spend money. We don't have it money in our capital projects. I go and hear this story everywhere, right? Again, another one, our assets are getting older. Passing design life. Most of assets are designed for 20, 25, 30 years, passing that. What's the average asset age of your, as your place? 30, 25, 30, 35 years? 40 years? And you know, influence factor is age of asset, usage rate, operating environment. This was kind of funny as found, I mean, not very interesting uh, data on uh, your uh, material handling. As you, your cost, as you start using more, your cost of petty handling equipment goes hour per hour, more and more, as we are using more. This is very interesting data. It's a, it's a Wall Street data came out about a few months ago. Companies are cutting back their capital expenditure. They are buying their stock backs. They are not investing back. Our age of equipment is going like this. This is the last 2011. See, the average age of industry equipment in the US has risen from the last 10 years, highest since 1938. Okay, I thought I'll give you some basic definitions so we are on the same page. We're going to talk about some asset maintenance, maintainability, li asset life cycle management, reliability. Asset. What is asset? Anything. This is asset. This book is asset. An item, equipment, device, system, something that has a value to the organization, which makes money for the organization. That's an asset. To me, I have extended a little bit more potential value that irrigation owns as a use for to create a value and has the responsibility to take care of it. In fact, that's a, one of the key things in a ISO standard is in a 55,000 disposal. How are you going to dispose it? It's not just when you are done, end of life, just throw it out. You have certain responsibility to take care of it too. Oops. Put the wrong one. Oh. oh. Maintenance. Fix it when breaks. To keep asset in operating condition. That's the old way. 
Maintenance is a negative connotation, maintenance word, something broken. If you think about really maintenance is capacity insurance. No, it's not just fixing things. We have to think more positive. Maintenance has a negative. Maintainability is when equipment goes down, asset goes down, how quickly we can bring it back to operation. That's a maintainability. It's a design attribute. You cannot add that when you get it. It has to be designed in much earlier when you are designing it. Maintainability features. It's measured by MTTR. This is a showing you from IOS of 55,000. They talk about asset, asset portfolio. Asset portfolio, the way they are defined, it could be a, a this is a portfolio of all the tables, chairs, fleets, or equipment in this could be a a fleet, or I mean a portfolio. So anything you can say, you put your boundary on out, that's your asset portfolio. Asset management system, set of interrelated, interacting elements to establish asset management policy, establish asset management objectives, process, that's asset management system. Asset management is coordinated activities or organization to realize value from their asset. That's asset management. So your first is asset management, then asset management system. You create a system to manage those assets. You hear a lot of word about RCM, reliability center maintenance. What is that? I go and talk to many, many people, and I get a different per perspective from different people what that mean to them. RCM. I talk about, you know, in my, talk, in my two days, three days class, we talk about half a day about RCM. And their RCM was developed back in the 60s for 747.747, that time. 747 was going to go down because FAA said you need to have, a, it's a three size bigger than 707, and you need a three times bigger maintenance on it. They couldn't afford it. That Boeing 747 project was going downhill. That's what RCM was done. So what RCM to some, especially if I go to NASA people, RCM to them is, a, is doing ultrasonic or infrared or anything predictive technology. To them, they are doing RCM. To some, I'm calculating MTVF, mean time between failure. I'm doing RCM. RCM. To some is availability. It's so all different perception. What RCM? Is this reliability? All these failures, big failures. This was in Russia, spatial, BP, horizon. All these problems. That's a UK that over there. All these issue, is this a reliability? You come to university here to spend whole semester, learn all these formulas, that's a reliability? Reliability is really is something you are dependable, items or anything works when needed it. Standard definition is this, is a probability that item will perform its intended function. But really, it's, this is peace of mind. Remember this guy, made that guy? That's what reliability is. It's peace of mind. You have taken all the failure out of the equation. You have done RCM on those assets. You may take guy the gut and they design it such a way it's much easier to maintain or does a failure doesn't happen or happen minimum failure happens. That's a peace of mind. That's what reliability is. So reliability, product, device, service, does it function reliability? 
and they have to be designed in. You cannot change anything once you get it. You have to modify it, change it, design, redesign it. That, that's what you know. It, it costs you more money. But if we do that design properly much earlier, when we are building it, designing it, it costs less, much less. Your total cost of ownership goes down. Asset life cycle management, it is a process designed based on industry best practices to manage asset performance. It is the management of technical, logistics, economical aspect of facility, manufacturing or operation aimed at minimizing the total cost of ownership, which includes design, construction, operation, maintenance, disposal of facility while preserving the integrity and maximizing the performance. A lot of words, but that's what it means. That asset management is from cradle to grave. That's what that is. We have, a, you know, you have, I call it zero phase, when somebody think about some, a concept that we're going to provide this product or service. Then you concept, develop that concept, how we're going to do that. You design it, you fabricate, build it, and install and commission it. This we call it, in some cases, aggregation phase. Many times, we have been working in silos in this. Over the years, we have been working, each one is its own silo. We design it for lowest cost. We get it built for lowest cost. Then commission it, also just get it. You know, we'll run it. Hopefully it will run good, with a hope. Then we have operation and maintenance and disposal when need is over. That's a utilization phase. Over the years, last 50, 60, 70 years, we have been maintaining this here. Never got involved here, anything. This is kind of a, how it goes. Design, development, procurement, then O&M phase for many, many years, 25, 30, 40 years. Then we dispose it. This is an interesting chart is a still notional chart because we don't have a data. But talking my own experience, talking many, many people, here's this is this is planning, design, build, install. This is what we are spending. This is operation and maintenance and then dispose. However, during this phase we may be spending 20, 25 percent of total life cycle cost. However, we are making commitment. What we're going to do it here, here, as we are designing it, what kind of component we are selecting it, how we are building it, what kind of quality we are putting it in, how we're commission, all those things, we are making commitment, what we're going to do it here. So this is a lot of opportunity cost. If we do a better job or Maybe we need to spend a little bit more money during this phase. Money means design it better, do a failure mode analysis, buy a better component. Don't procure for lowest cost. Procure for the best value. If we do that, then this cost will go down. So O&M cost is to be 60, 80 percent total life cycle cost. We can reduce this cost a lot. And as a result, we can reduce our O&M total, total cost of ownership. We used to focus a lot more on maintenance. Then, a couple of decades ago, or 10, 15 years ago, we changed our focus to reliability. Let's build reliability. We learn, hey, that's not really, we are talking asset management. Mean we have to build, we have to look the whole life cycle from cradle to grave. That's what our money, we can make really more headway. 
I was, this was a year ago, we, I chair a session and our task of focus group was to how you can explain to a CEO in one, you know, you, you got 30 seconds to tell him what asset management, what is asset management. We have been going to our top management telling them, oh, we want to improve maintenance, give us some money. Then we say, we want to improve reliability, give us some money. Now say, we want to give us some money, we want to do asset management. How are we going to justify to him what asset management or justify or define? So focus, maintenance repair is today. Reliability was next week or next period, where asset management now is a lifetime. Objective, fix it, reduce failure, reduce life cycle cost. Who are involved? Maintenance, operational maintenance, everyone, everyone in the plan. Accountability, maintenance, maintenance ops, the asset owner, the plant manager, he's responsible, accountable for that. Many companies are going this new concept called asset ownership. The guy here in charge is asset owner. He has the money for operation, maintenance, as well as capital projects for in this room. He's an asset owner for this room or this building or this plant. Whatever area you bound it, that's what the asset owner. So asset performance expectations performing on demand and design demonstrated capability producing quality products, minimum total cost of ownership. And when we're talking total cost of ownership, we are talking acquisition cost, installation cost, operational maintenance cost, disposal cost. All these costs are cost of ownership. Reality. Most of assets don't meet expected targets. Cost too much, always late, high on m cost. As a result of all this, our total cost of ownership goes up. If our assets are now reliable, available when we need them, how we can make our customers happy? Now, customer could be a final consumer, or it could be your next level up, whom you're supplying something. That's your customer, too. Asset deliver value when they perform on demand when we need them at design and demonstrated capability, produce quality product, and it reduces minimum total cost ownership. In my mind, asset performance is based on three factors. Reliability, how it was designed in, how is being operated by who? You know, 30, 40 percent of failures are contributed to operations, lack of their knowledge about that asset. They don't know why they are doing this. They are doing this or to operate. They don't know why, what happens when they do this. And as a result, there are 30, 40 percent of failure due to the operators and don't know or they don't get involved. Because we have created, over the years, a reward system. Operator, operate it. Don't worry about you beat the numbers, quota. When it's down, then call maintenance, fix it. Otherwise, you don't talk. Designer, design for lowest cost. We have to change that. And that's what asset management does. That how we gonna get all everybody together to think about what we're gonna do together. Then maintenance. And all these are players. The performance of this asset. So key elements in meeting the expectations, assets, and people. And together they're gonna make it happen. Again, when I say people, whether it's operator, 
or your maintenance engineer or your designer all have to have a knowledge or understanding why we are doing this, why it's being done, and they have worked together for a, the best value, what we're going to get out of that. How many of you, again, I'm just asking a question, we do FMEA during design phase of a, whatever we are building, designing. How many of our civil structure, keep reminding me civil guy there, we put a PDA predictive technology in our systems, in civil structures. You know Minnesota Bridge to I-35? Minneapolis Bridge has a 323 sensor embedded in it, in bridge, concrete bridge, which transmits the data every minute to the University of Minnesota with the contact with DOT that, hey, what's happening on that? So they are using predictive technology in a civil structure too. It's not a predictive technology just for mechanical systems or electricals. It could be used anywhere. And key thing is the people's knowledge, understanding how we can deliver them and knowledge what that means. Once they know why, they will do a better job. Excellence. I didn't talk much about excellence. Again, I just want to give you a preview. What excellence, operation excellence, or excellence mean? When do it right first time, every time, by everyone. It's not just maintenance guy, operation guy. It has to be designer. It has to be procurement guy. It has to be a HR guy providing right training, or arranging for right training. All those guys, all, everyone in the plant. Has has to do then is excellence. Do we know what assets we have, their capability? These are just provoking, uh, uh, question. Do you know what assets you own? Where they're located? What's the replacement value? Do you know what assets are critical to your operation? What is health? <coughs> Real time. I have seen system your stoplight chart, yellow, green, red. Hey, this is going to be right now, it's yellow, green. In six months, it's going to become yellow if you don't do anything. Or in two years, it's going to be red. Means it's going to stop. What kind of data we can get? Do you know where the failures are happening in these assets? Do you have PD, PM, PDM on these assets? Or are you using run to failure philosophy? That's OK, run to failure. If it's economical, if it costs you more to do PM, it's OK. Run to failure is okay, all right. But document it. Do you know what assets you need to meet customers' requirement next six months, one year, two years, five years on the road? What reliability of failure rate you're expecting? Do you know what's a gap in your assets capabilities? And how are you going to take care of it? Is your management aware of it? Do you have input in business needs? Do you get involved in design fabrication? Do you, or your designer, capital project manager, perform FMEs to optimize design? Or your people get involved in installation and commissioning? Do you have right people to do the job? Right knowledge, understanding, skill sets. Do you have a plan, your training based on JTA, your knowledge, skill, attributes, competency based? Do you have how much your inventory spares? What percent of your total replacement value of that inventory is? Maybe you got too little or too much. If you outsource, that's another thing in the ISO standard now. If you outsource, your obligation doesn't go away. You have to make sure they have the right people to do the job. <laughs> do you have environmental policy? How many of you have environmental policy? Quality policy? How about asset management policy? 
Nobody has asset management. Hey, asset management is key, produces something, all your product. But we don't know asset management policy, what that mean? Don't mess with grandma. <laughs> How do we maximize value from our assets? <coughs> when as assets are performing with the minimum maintenance needs, minimum failures, with optimum maintenance, care by operators, operators care. They understand what they are doing, what they do, how they are doing, what, make, what happens if they do this or that. Design with reliability, availability, maintainability, safety, sensibility, all that focus in during design phase. All stakeholders doing their job, catching errors early, doing right things at right time. With the culture of excellence, everyone doing their job right. All these are stakeholders. All these are stakeholders. Rick, you like this one? It's not <laughs> We need to have a disciplined system approach or process to do it, to manage our assets. ISO 9001, many years ago, this old quality standard. And you can use that 9001. In fact, we did it, our place. We are ISO 9001 certified not on quality, asset management. We selected, we identified 14 process. Asset management was one of the process back in 2002. and got certified in 2004. End of 2003, we got certified for, by third party. Again, we have a policy which says what and why we are doing this. Procedures, how, high level, then work instruction, detail level, how we going to do it. Then in PAS 55, which is a publicly available standard specification from British BSI, came in 2004 and then 2008. Mostly that was implemented in the uh, UK and Australia. And it was now going, it has a little bit less participation. However, then it was done kind of in a vacuum or few people. Finally, we all, we all, I mean, U.S. or silly, everybody got together and we came up, uh, got involved 55,001, which is ISO standard, and came out early last time, last year this time, and that's a new standard. In fact, uh, we went through and we can meet every requirement because we are ISO 9001 certified in asset management. We can meet all the requirements. That standard says asset management is, hey, here is asset exist to provide value to the stakeholders. People are the key determiners of asset value realization. Asset management organization is a learning organization. So these are kind of elements, principles of asset management. The key elements are you have our organization objectives, and then you have asset management policy, objectives, asset management planning, Asset life cycle activities, planning, execution, and these are assets. And just go back and changing all this, all the time. 
ISO 55000 has a three standards within that umbrella. 55000 is a really key one is a 50001, which is a requirement document. You have to comply with this, which has all the shell statements. 55000 is overview principles and terminology. 55002 is a more a guidelines or clarifications. which is explanation, example, how kind of thing. These are the 10 <coughs> clauses. These are three there, which are same, you know, but here these are the important. Context, why organization exists, how they make things, what they make it, the leadership, the planning, support, operation, performance, evaluation, and improvements. Now, 55,000 standard is a just a framework. It doesn't tell you how to maintain or do PDM or do RCM, doesn't tell you. You have to tell, hey, here's my, my corporate objectives are, how to meet those objectives, here what my assets are, what they do, how I'm gonna maintain them, how we're gonna operate them, how I want to make sure I get the best value out of those. That's what you have to tell, and you have to lay out that plan. And then also they want you to do auditing. I tell you, many years ago, I thought all standards, I never bought it. I mean, didn't have a buy-in audit. Since I got involved with 9001 and then on the, this team, boy, my things have changed. These standards are the best practices. Those are the best practices, best of mind during that time, you know, think about even your traffic lights, your computers, these phones, all these have been standardized. A lot of things have been standardized. And that doesn't happen overnight just like that. It took a lot of effort, a lot of people got together, consensus, we came up all these standards. So this process, or ISO 55000 or 9000, or any standard, is a is a framework. You had to tell them, hey, this is what I do the business with. This is my framework, how I do things. You know, it used to be old quality thing or standards. It's a just tell me how you're doing it, and then I come and audit you. Those days are over. Really, those auditor ask you, yes, tell me, show me how you're doing it, but how, tell me also, show me how you're improving it with your data. All those things are, is you have to tell it. You have to set up those systems. How are you gonna improve it? Where is your data? How you did it? Why you did it? That's what question the auditors ask. So, so these are some standards which are referenced in 55,000, which are really important, which we all need to know as asset managers. 9,000 quality management, 55,000 asset management, 50,001 is energy management, 31,000 risk management, 26,000 is a social responsibility. That's a new one, just came about a year ago. As an organization, we live in, a, in our community, society. We have certain obligations as to our society, the community where we live. And those are kind of social responsibility. And 14,000, a lot of us are, are familiar with this, 14,000. And then safety and health. All these are related to asset. Risk. Whatever we do, our maintenance is risk. You know, we t it's a balancing act. We do all every day. But we have to evaluate what risk we are. We don't know what's there, out there. We have to evaluate all our risk. Really, application of standards makes our process as a more robust, streamlined, productive, and brings a uniformity across all our departments, all our plants, 
that makes a break. Standards are the best practices when, you know, when you start with. So all these standards, and in my mind, ISO 50000 sit in the center because that's what is a asset is, which is a key, produces a product or provides a service. How do you establish an asset management process? Establish a team of the people from all Use a SIPAC chart or something to identify inputs and outputs to the process. Map out the process. Do a SWOT analysis where your strengths and weaknesses are there. Develop policy procedures, work instructions. Use a 55,000 as a guideline to put up your frame. That's a framework, put things inside those boxes. Key thing is the communication, awareness. People understand why we are doing it. I tell you, 14 August years ago, when we started our ISO process, boy, I tell you, I was, when auditor came, I was sweating. I was process manager. I mean, we were routing, putting a route together, where he's going to go, she's going to go, he's going to go, and what we're going to show him is our procedure, or current, all these kind of things. About six months ago, Kelly was our process in Yaska. Hey, auditor coming next week, what are you doing? Uh, she was not sweating. She was, everything went great. Because some of those things have ingrained in our culture. We know the procedure on the floor is going to be current. Because that's the only way they can get. They have to print it out right there. They cannot keep in a drawer anymore. We have been evaluating all our procedures on a regular basis. We know there's a best practice at this time. All those kind of things we have done in grain, so nobody was sweating anymore. It has become a part of our culture, and it doesn't cost extra money or something. Key thing is, what's for me? Creating that, why I should get involved? What's for me, how it's going to help me do my job better. That's what we have to create that environment. Increased management awareness or asset management. Again, we have done something different in our place. In fact, Nissan and the guys are doing. We have adopted to have a, some common language. We adopted a certification called CMRP, Certified Major Library Professional. And it's a requirement to be a director, part of general manager's team, senior engineers, managers, all have to be CMRP. We got over 120. In our corporation, we got about 280 in Jacobs. Nissan is doing the same thing. They got about 40 now, 35, 40. And what that brings, in fact, I'm happy he couldn't come today. Their plant manager, battery plant is a Plant, plant manager CMRP just got it a month ago. So again, that kind of a creating awareness. A few years ago, it was difficult, or it was a not difficult. Yeah, it was a little bit difficult to get a infrared camera for twenty thousand dollars to how many signature we need. We bought about six months a year ago, eighty thousand dollar camera infrared. People, everyone knew the importance, value. They were talking the same language and got approval just like that. Again, it's a more transportable job skills and those kind of things. Asset management vision. Assets are available. Assets are maintained cost effectively. Assets are designed, are acquired with a built-in reliability, maintainability, safety, sustainability. Major needs are minimized or eliminated. Personnel who are operating, maintaining, designing, procuring, supporting asset in any form or shape are trained, aware of current 
best practices. This is kind of a evolution of maintenance to asset management. Back in those days, reactive, then planned maintenance, PM, CMMS system came. Last 20 years, application of best practices, business risk, RCM, CBM. And now we are talking designing for reliability, designing for asset, asset management, culture of reliability, safety. That's what we are talking. If we do things right from the start, things will be OK. In summary, achieving reliability operation excellence requires knowledge of maintenance, reliability, asset management principles, and best practices. This knowledge is not just for maintenance guys but for all stakeholders. Application standards can make our process more robust. A robust asset process enables to maximize value from our assets by minimizing failures. It's a journey. I mean, if somebody says you can get the results tomorrow, six months, one year, no. It's a journey. Changing culture takes you five, 10, 15 years. It takes a long time, but it pays off, pays off. Let's stop whining, start doing something. <coughs> start asking a question on asset management, reliability improvement. Who's going to do it? What are they going to do? Where are they going to do? When they're going to do it? How are we going to do it? Ask, start asking questions. Take a lead. That's my nickel, sir. Now, anybody question? Come on, guys. Yes, sir. Yeah. I worked for IBM back in the 70s and the 80s, and we were big in Six Sigma. Yes. Silicon process and things like that. It seems like to me, Asset management then was in the context of quality management, but now it seems to have risen. Yes, back, I mean, some people think reliability was part of uh, quality, but it's not. What they were in quality, they were talking from quality perspective, but really what we're talking asset, which produces a product or services or whatever, anything. That's right. That's, I mean, again, as a part of, in fact, the quality of that asset, what it's producing is part of that asset. If its tolerance is not right, if it's doing vibration, it's not going to produce a good product. So really, quality management is in there. See, quality department has been, in the past, inspection. When Deming said, hey, no, let's do the quality at source. The operator who is doing, let him or her do the job. Today we were doing a, a KPI review, and our quality guy says, hey, where's your quality stuff mm. in your maintenance KPIs? Mm. And I said, they're all related to quality. Yeah. Because if, if, if the asset's not meeting its function, it yeah. will not produce a quality product. Not a quality product. So quality is built in there. I mean, that's what I say when I say safety. In fact, we got a data showing if you become a more reliable, reliability, you are much more safer. Your, 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 your safety record goes, I mean, down. We have a data showing as we are getting better, better in our reducing our failures. Because what happens if your failure happens, you are in a hurry. You'll do the mistakes. You'll become unsafe. So all those are things there. So asset management is much broader. We were talking earlier at a break time before that, hey, asset management is much broader. To some, it may be just a part of energy management designing such a way so energy efficient. That's a part of, it's not separate energy department. Hey, that's a part of that asset, how we can minimize cost of ownership, cost of operation. That's energy management in it. Same thing in risk. 
is a part of that asset management. Should I do a PM or not? Hey, if this component fail, I can buy from Granger or something in one hour, I can buy that you know, motor and it won't hurt me. I don't, I don't want to do a PM. I want to do just one hour because it won't hurt me. So those kind of decisions you're going to make. Anybody else? How here? Got anything out of this? You're going to be in the field another six months, one year, two years. I think the biggest struggle is the acquisition phase. Yes. You know, changing that entire chart that you showed to invest the capital on the front end of it and the yep. design and acquisition. Yes. That's what our, I mean, I've focused up or emphasized that. Hey, we have to get our procurement guys, our capital project guys. In fact, management has to be on. I mean, I know Nissan, you guys are doing something, but not to that extent yet. A long way to go. Now, from your experience in the different industries in the 50 plus years, have you seen trends with different organizations uh, where their upper management is more along the financial or just, you know, with the college of business managers, or maybe if their entire uh, organizational structure came out of <coughs> engineering? In the last few years, I've I saw the change. I've seen a lot of big companies now. Companies have realizes the value of asset management. They have started investing in it. They are trying to do, but it still is a long way to go. Again, that culture you cannot change overnight. I tell you, my first experience was Battle of Steel, 1971, 70, Buffalo. I hear guy comes in with all college, read about all the American management and all this, and I was given a mill, put a PM program together for built in 1923-1927, and here I was reading about Japan coming their blast furnaces built in 1950s, 1960s, and I asked their they call them in the steel mill. Chief Master Mechanic, Chief Hunch on Maintenance. I said, Sid, what's going on here? So he said, look, that, that's a UA, USW Bible. We follow that, and then we got top management, MBA sitting there. They don't give us some money. We have to live what we have. Yeah. That was it. And it, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s didn't change. Now things have started, because I see a lot of I've seen with my company, I've seen a Nissan, I'm aware of these four or five plants, I can talk to them, Goodyear, a few other companies, things are changing. But it's going to take a while. It's not going to happen overnight. Still, they have to live with, you know, there's a lot of hurdles. But now, I call them champions are there coming up in different places and they're doing something. Good question. Anybody else? Wayne, you added something? Anybody? Oh, yes, sir. How do, you, how do you see implementation of these uh, ideas in the federal government, state government, and local government? There is effort going right now from our committee, I call it the US Tech Technical Advisor Group on ISO 55000. We have been working with the uh, Washington insiders, trying to get hold of some uh, lawmakers and talk to them the value. Somehow asset management got a lot more in UK and Australia. The regulators, they want that to be, hey, regulator asking for that. Hey, give me, show me your asset management process. Okay? We are not doing that. But I think I have seen now a lot of in a water treatment plant. It's coming as a necessity. Our asset structure is old, 60, 70, 80 years old, is breaking down. And they cannot keep asking more money. So they have to do something. They have to come up with a plan. Hey, how are they going to do it? In fact, we did that back in, in fact, there is a plan, what's uh, called uh, GASB 34, came back in late 90s, where utilities have to show, they have to have asset condition monitoring. And they had to put the money 
how they're going to replace it, you know, based on its condition. So they have done some work as a not complete regulatory requirement, but they have accounting practices there. So it slowly is happening. But you tell that these are usually seen that they've been they've tried to separate those from the political process. Yes. They're they're out there. Well, they're kind of independent because they can go and get the money. They can re increase the rate. They get you so they can do some of those things. But also they are not required, but their accounting practices are there, which they have to follow. As a result, they have to do something there. I know Cincinnati water system, Chicago, I was a Chicago water system about a year ago. They called me, do some of these stuff. Some of these water systems and cities, Calgary, Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis, they are looking into how to make better as their civil structure. City of Calgary in Canada has done a fantastic job putting business plan together for their how to uh, take care of those assets. I heard they were going to make uh, certain federal or state organizations that expect federal or state money to be ISO 85,000. We are working again in our committee. We had somebody from from uh, GSA and some others. So we are working on that how we can make that happen at that level. To give money. Give money. Yeah. To have to be in compliance, then only you can get the money or something. So it's going to happen. I think next four or five years, it's going to happen. Things are going to change. I have seen the big trend going. Oh, your railroad, in New York City, MARTA. They are big on. They have asset management. They bought in. Their CEO bought in, and they are doing it. In fact, there was a, I was reading the other day, there was a very interesting article about water leakage. You know, one third, one third, 35 or 40 percent of water leaks all over the world. All over the world. 40 percent of your water goes leaks. So this small company in Israel has come up a method process. They have a, they put a sensor and then a software and they tell you which location is leaking. And now city of, uh, they got two cities in Melbourne and Australia, and I think Los Angeles is their time to work with them. This article came in Wall Street about two, three months ago. So there are a lot of small companies are coming up this process where to reduce, our, what they've done is they're just on the sensor, they know how much is water, water is going here, 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 so they can figure it out how much leakage between this to this place, and they're trying to use predictive technology for that. I guess I'm thinking about the Chicago Water Authority and the mayor is a city councils, governors, and legislative bodies, presidents, and well, House I of think representatives yes, the we have to. All of us together, we have to bring that message to them. It is one way we can get more systemized a process, okay, which will tell us, hey, what's happening? You know, ISO 55 is just a framework. It doesn't tell you, hey, do RCM or do this or do this. It doesn't there's no world in maintenance there? But it asks you to put the framework, and then you have to tell, hey, this is my asset, my corporate objectives are this. I have to make deliver this much water or this much vehicles or whatever. To do that, I got asset. This asset has to do this, 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 and how I'm going to maintain those. If there's a gap, how I'm going to put that gap, you know, by capital projects or whatever. So those are kind of, is it just, a, you have to build a process to do that. Right now, we are just, oh, wherever it fails, we put our money there, and then tomorrow that fails, we put some money there. Um, we don't have money, enough money to put everywhere. But that process, in fact, the Department of Transportation, Michigan, has done great. Go and read their, their website. They maintain by asset management. What they have done is they have categorized where they're going to spend their money based on what criteria. And so much money for this, so much money for this. And that's what they allocated money according to their needs. <coughs> that's what the asset management is. Is you know, put your priorities. Put your criticality, where the asset is more critical to you, how much money is there, that you can do that. And they have put together a pretty good package. 
So I think this coming, again, I have seen a big difference last two, three, four years. Before it was not there. Good question. Anybody else? What if a, uh, what if a state transportation commissioner wrote this into a proposal to use this process? Sure. Uh, the consultants out on board the. the I mean, I mean, somebody has to. Hey, our company, my company, Jack, a parent company, that's what they propose nowadays, all SMM process. You know, that's what they laid out, and they, that's what they tell them, that's the way you're going to do a business. And they get a contract built on that. Again, you have to show it, you know, you are right track, you're doing right things, you know. Just, just want to make sure it's not a career engineer. Or no, yeah. <laughs> In fact, one of my senior manager, Jacobs, he was a plant manager at a Michoud facility. He just got a promotion. He went to Morocco. There's a 10 years project there. They got a big uh, phosphate ore and fertilizer ore, and they are doing asset management. That's what he went there to do an asset management on those assets. No, but Bart's predecessor. Mike Dawson. They got a contract for next up to 22, 25, 10 years to do it. They have been there the last five years, but now they got 10 years to do asset management. Okay. Nobody else has a point. I want to thank you all of you for coming in this evening and hope I gave you some nuggets to chew. Again, this is again this is just a primer. Wait for more information if you want to get in a little bit more detail. I think she's coming up with two days. You guys are coming for two days or something. Because this is a new subject and again, it's a lot of, you know, material we have to put together. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.